Well, Gareth, as we get ready for this weekend's game at Stoke, obviously there was a, a big buzz after such a fantastic victory at Burnley last weekend. But how important is it that people don't get too carried away because there is still such a big job to be done to complete the job? Yeah, it's a brilliant moment at the end of the game. You know, it really was. And, and deserve it as well. I thought the boys played really well. You know, all the tactics we put in place were spot on. Um, we knew we were going to soak up some pressure. We knew... Uh, we knew what Burnley had done to teams that had gone there and opened up and tried to press them. Uh, there's no way I was going to do that, you know, because uh, it it it's just a tried and failed method, you know, over the year, over the years at Burnley. So we we went up there with this this plan, um, and I, I can say that the boys nailed it. Absolutely brilliant, you know. I can only ask them to do something. Um, they did it to a T, you know, and, and extras, and extras as well. They were they were awesome, and uh, the boys deserve all the credit for that win. They were they were just immense when they crossed that line, and when Chris Martin's header went in on the 87 minutes, whatever it was, it was just it was just a moment of like, wow, this this could really happen today, you know, because honestly, we, we probably took a point, you know, when Burnley scored, uh, and what a goal they scored, very similar to one scored against Blackburn on on Monday, uh, Tuesday, actually, you know. Exactly the same, wasn't it, Benson? What a player he is. Um, but I took a point at that stage. It was like, all right, point away from Burnley, away at home. Let's, uh, oh, sorry, away f at home. Uh, f f <laughs> away at Burnley's home is not a bad point. You know, we, we'd come back and we'd, we'd go, right, what do we need to do now? Well, what we need to do now is win, you know. And, and as you rightly said at the start of the interview, people cannot get carried away now with this. This isn't done this by any means. You know, I want two wins. I want two wins from these next two games. Um, we want to go into both games believing that we can win because we've just beat top of the league. You know, we've just done a, a magnificent thing up there, great performance. So the boys know they can do it now. The spirit's there. Um, Alex Neal's not going to be easy on Saturday away at Stoke. It's going to be a real tough game. I know we're travelling in big numbers now, and I can't thank the the fans enough. And and by the way, those Burnley supporters, uh, you know, the away fans there, they would just never stop singing. It was it was so good to hear and. And as I say, you do make a difference. So if we can get behind us at Stoke, I'm sure that could be a, a massive plus for us as well. Might not go as well as Burnley, might go better, who knows? All I can do is then put the plan in place, get the team up there, prepare them right, and hopefully we can get the uh, the three points, which which would be a brilliant a brilliant survival at Stoke. But if we don't, we've got Bristol City to do it again, you know, and, uh, and I want to make sure that at home, we finish with a, a bang this season. So, um, yeah, both games are really important to me still, you know, there's no foot off the gas, there's been no extra days off or anything, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're really on this and, uh, and hopefully, like I say, we can get over the line this weekend and definitely next. Four points from Norwich and Burnley, I don't think there's a team in the division that wouldn't take that. What has that done for the dressing room? Because you've spoken before about the mental challenges your squad have had because of the run they've had for the second half of the entire season. What impact has that had on the dressing room? I think um, trust is a big word, Miles, you know, in each other, you know, because the system we played, you had to trust each other, you had to really rely on your teammate, and they did. And all 20 people who travelled up there, you know, I pulled um, Elijah Dixon Bonner and, and Jake Clark Salter just before the game and said, look, you two aren't going to be in the 18. Um, but they were brilliant. They both said, Gaffer, we're here for you. And Jake was behind the bench shouting and screaming like you wouldn't believe you know he's getting and, and directing the boys because he's such a good player there's no way I was going to risk him after he, he, he got a bit of tightness in the in the Norwich game he's been out for four months there's no way you know if I put him on a bench I know what happens the centre half gets down after five minutes and Jake has to come on and it's all mayhem so I didn't want even that that temptation you know so Jake was brilliant and Elijah for such a young boy you know really trying um and getting behind his boys as well, you know, and in the dressing room, they're in the, in the celebrations at the end. But what it's done is, um, the boys now have got this, this bond, this trust in each other, which it's probably always been there, but just been a bit more cemented, you know, this week. And then the trust in me and the coaching staff, because we, we ask them to do something, we feel it's the right thing. They probably look at us thinking, is this, this sounds a bit, you know, this sounds a bit dodgy, or is this going to work, or what? And when it does come off, I think that, you know, the, the the relationship between everyone then just gets that bit closer, and uh, and they start believing. And once you start believing in things, that's when they work. You know, when you really believe in something, you really put your mind to something that uh, uh, that's that's when you get the results. So 
what we're hoping is we can back it up this weekend with a, with another performance. Results come and go and you get them either way, referees, decisions on goals and, and freak things. But performance, you know, you can affect your own performance. You can affect how much you work. You can affect how good your passing is. You can affect how good your, your decisions or your relationship with your teammates are. That's all on you. And, uh, and I'm hoping that the results that we've seen these last four games, really, you know, two wins, a win, uh, a, a win two draws and, and a loss, um, it's not bad form, you know, going into this stage of the season. So I'm hoping we can uh, we can build on that up at uh, the Britannia. Ethan Laird wasn't involved against Norwich. He came on at Burnley. How pleased have you been by his reaction? Again, um, great, great lad. We forget how young he is, you know. He's younger than Aaron Drew, who everyone's... We've put Aaron Drew and everyone's like, wow, we've put a, a young player in today. Ethan's younger than Aaron. And... Uh, and we forget that because he's on loan from Man United. You expect he knows it all. Is this mature player? He's not. He's still young, you know. And, and I think that um, we had some real good meetings with Ethan. Uh, me, some one-to-ones with Ethan. Um, I left him out of the squad for a reason. I was part of development of everyone. And and uh, and do you know what? His reaction has just been absolutely superb. He's 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 a real a real good footballer. Um, he's got a big chance in the game and. Uh, and he came on uh, second half against Burnley, and I thought he was sensational. Really was, you know, um, his defending, the way he was throwing himself into tackles, the way he was executing what we'd asked for, um, and some of his balls forward as well. So, now fair play to Ethan. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of him, and uh, and I'm sure he's, uh, he's he's going to play a big part in these next couple of weeks. Um, but as is everyone, you know, there's been a couple that I've had to leave out, and it's not easy as a manager. You know, you you. You leave them out for, for reasons and you bring them in the office, you tell them the reasons, you're honest with them, it's never personal um, and all you want is uh, is the right reaction out of them. And I'll have to say, um, yeah, majority of these boys are just, just awesome, you know, they go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I understand and I'll do it and I'll do it better. And uh, and that's all you want as a manager, you know, because I, I don't always get it right. And when the boys are watching this, I'll, I'll try and do it better when I get it wrong. Uh, we really self-reflect and look at ourselves as well. but. Um, Got a good bunch of boys here. Got a real good bunch of boys. I'm just about getting them now, finally. In these last couple of weeks, we're getting all together. Hopefully, we can get a, a win, which would secure survival on our terms. Um, we'll see what, what happens. Like you say, it's an incredible opportunity to draw a line in the sand under this season, this weekend at Stoke. You look at the league table and there's that suggestion Stoke haven't got anything to play for, but with Alex Neal in the home dugout, someone you know well, you know that won't be the case. No, it's a proud manager, you know, and we're all managers. Um, you know, you, you can't you can't vouch for what every player's thinking, you know, when they go out on that pitch, if, if they've, if whatever is, you know, their, their, their situation. But as a manager, I know Alex will want to, want to win the game, you know. It's, uh, as managers, that's our job. We want to go out there and win games, you know, and, uh, and you know, I'm sure he'll be looking at things, but ultimately he'll want to, who want to beat QPR at home, you know, it's their last home game of the season. We've got to make sure we're on it. We've got to make sure we go up there with the mentality that we can win the game, the belief that we can win the game, the want to win the game, because, you know, like I said, that could set up a, a, a great a great night that night and a great week the next week, but it may not happen. We have, may have to do it the next week. Um, we've just got to make sure that, as I say, performances are high, levels are high, everyone's committed, everyone's doing the right things. We're going to go up Friday night, we're going to prepare right, um, I've got great people at this club who support me and have trusted me and, and, and trusted me with this survival bid. Um, I'm hoping we can do it sooner rather than later. But um got a good bunch of boys now and we all believe together. Hopefully we can come back with the points. Treatment room is looking quieter without tempting fate. Obviously Tim Rubin and back, Sinclair Armstrong back. Jake Clark Salter was not in the, the squad but travelled up at the weekend. Um, what is the latest you can tell us, team news wise? Yeah, uh, listen, Ozzy Ozzy Kaka is going to be out. Uh, he's probably going to struggle to to play again this season. Uh, and Leon Balogun, you know, um, gutted for Leon. I can't thank him enough for his efforts, you know, because he's a he's a top top professional as well, you know. As as Ozzy, both of them, you know, um, they you know they've got injured, really fighting for this cause. Um, so for anyone, if we can do it for those two, there, there's a great two to do it for. But um, both of those will be missing from the weekend squad. Everyone else should be in contention. Even Tyler Roberts has been out on the grass again, which is great. He's had a hell of a season with injury. But um, no, we're looking strong at the right time of the season. You know, I wish I had those two back. It would be a great to have a full complement. But uh, 
it never seems to happen, especially here. We've got to we've got to make sure that we uh, we keep these boys fit. But um, whatever I take up there, and whatever starts uh, on that pitch in the Britannia will be enough to win that game, and I'm hoping we can get the three points. And very finally, more than two thousand QPR fans are making the trip north to get behind you, get behind the team. That must please you so much. Uh, honestly, um, this is these are the reasons, and this is the reasons why I came to this club. You know, not just because it's I consider it, you know. One of my clubs, now I'm a Blackburn fan, everyone knows that, but QPR, if anyone says where did Gareth Ainsworth play, I think the majority of the public would say oh, he, he used to play for QPR, and you know, and that for me, um, I'm proud, I'm so proud to have played so many games for this club, um, to have had so many magic moments at this club, honestly, to have so many friends who support this club, you know, close friends now, personal friends that, that because of QPR, they're, they're in my life. Um, it means a lot to me, this place, you know. So when those fans go up in the numbers they're going in and get behind us like they do on the games, it means so much. I choke up, never mind the players on the pitch, you know. So um, together we can do this. Thank you so much for paying your money, getting on the buses, going up there. I really hope we deliver for you because I'll be giving everything to the boys these next two days to make sure they're on it. Um, it'd be great to survive together. Um, and it'd make the Bristol game a really nice game. But if that doesn't happen, don't worry. It will, be a, it will be a nice end to the season, I'm telling you. We're going to give our absolute all, give our best. That's all we can ever do. If it isn't good enough, then it was our best. But I'm sure if we all do it, it will be.